Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to do a custom makeover on an old Redline Red Baron. We're going to call this one the Blue Max. I get my inspiration here from a dragster from the 70s driven by Raymond Beetle. Let's get started. One of the first things I learned about this particular car is that the rivets on this car are extremely thin. The ones holding the engine and the helmet inside the car. When you go to take these out you have to be super super careful because if you miss the dead center of the rivet it's going to blow out the post. So here's an example. The engine post here is extremely thin as you can see by the picture here. If you don't get that exactly dead center it's not going to be very good. I've decided to go ahead and do an engine swap on this car. Now the helmet here, yeah they can be drilled but I blew out the post on this one. I got another helmet here and what I did is I filed down the post of the helmet. I don't think I'm going to be screwing this car back together so what I'm going to do is file it down enough to where I can use some JB weld and then I'm gonna just fill the holes with shorter screws just to fill in that hole and make it look pretty good. Same thing with the front. But since I'm doing an engine swap now, that front post is pretty much irrelevant. These posts are so tiny. I got the citrus strip here in a can. Last video I was using the citrus strip out of a can and I'll continue to use it until the can is empty. But man does it put off a lot of fumes. It'll choke you if you're not careful. So I'll use the stuff in the can until this is gone. I went ahead back to Walmart and I bought a bottle of the citrus strip. Now this still smells pretty nasty but again it's a chemical it's made to strip paint so it is going to smell. But um, I like having the control over this a little bit better. You, you just put a little bit more on there and um, it'll work. So here we are spraying down the car with citrus strip Then you're going to let it sit for a while. I have actually let cars sit overnight with the citrus strip on there and it doesn't affect them at all. At least metal anyways. But uh, what's really cool is once you do spray it and it gets cooking in there and you see all those bubbles yeah that's your stuff working right there. I, I love watching that but I'm pretty easily entertained too. It's uh... it's weird. It really is. But I love this hobby. I, I truly do. Take your brush scrub it on down. Now I wear gloves when I'm handling this paint stripper. I don't want to get that stuff all over my fingers because hey it'll burn you. But use that stiff brush to rub all that stuff down. Now we're going to use a wire brush to take off some of the toning marks and uh, hopefully some of the scratches out of it. You can use a pick to get into the tighter areas once you've used your citrus strip for paint that hasn't been removed easily. You can also use a wire brush. Now, when you're using this wire brush on the end of a Dremel, you need to wear your safety glasses. Because as this thing rotates, it'll constantly throw little wires out of there and you've only got two eyes, folks. Some of you hardcore die cast people that do these restorations only have one eye. Well, wear your glasses. Be careful on the speed of your Dremel. If you get it going too fast, it'll jump away on you, like you see here occasionally. Just go ahead and continue buffing until you get the shine you want. Now, if you buff too long in certain areas, you can remove the zinc plating. You can definitely remove that plating. Now, we are going to go into zinc plating in another video here in the future. But uh, this car really doesn't need it. 
do your best to shine it up and get all the nasties off of it. You can touch it up with sandpaper or the little sanding blocks. Fine grit, you don't want to use the heavy grit. Shouldn't have too much more to go on this. Get the front end and get the firewall. That's looking pretty good. Good deal. Let's move on. Now it's time to polish it. I got my polishing compound here, good old turtle wax polishing compound. My experience has showed me that you really don't want to use rubbing compound. The grit inside the rubbing compound is a little bit too aggressive. So all you're going to do is scratch that coating right off there. Just a little bit of rubbing or polishing compound, excuse me. and. Uh, should get the shine that you want. Now of course the shinier it is underneath and the base, the shinier your paint job is going to be. Alright, now for the helmet. Helmet definitely had some toning on there. We used a brush and we got a lot of that off. We got this Scotch-Brite pad that will work pretty decent. Let's use the brush first, take this on down. Just don't let it get away from you and make sure again you're wearing your safety glasses when you use any kind of power tools like this. Boy that's shining up really really nice. Just get it as nice and shiny as you can. And you want to be careful not to overwork it. You can sit there and polish and shine and buff and rub and everything. But once you get to the point where you're satisfied and you're happy, then go ahead and stop. Because like I say, you can work this to death. And if you keep on going long enough, you're liable to take the zinc coating right off the thing. we're just about done here. Well now that we've removed most of it with the wire brush, just about time to pull out the old turtle wax polishing compound again. Alright, that looks pretty good. Let's buff it up to a nice shine. Alright, back to the old turtle wax. This stuff is very inexpensive also. Now, when you start off your hobby and you're just doing this for fun, you can go crazy on the equipment. I recommend that you just get some more inexpensive stuff when you start to make sure that this is what you want to do. This Dremel that I'm using for instance, I've had that thing for over 30 years and uh, <laughs> It's really loud. That's why I'm doing the voiceover on this thing because it'll drown me out completely. But um, these uh, little buffing pads, you can get those at any hardware store like Ace Hardware or Lowe's or Home Depot. I happen to get these at Harbor Freight. They're uh, incredibly inexpensive and uh, they'll last a few, few buffings and like that till they fall apart. And that old adage you get what you pay for. But uh, just keep going with it till you're satisfied. You may have to put a little bit more compound on there if necessary. Should be fairly close to being done here. Alright. Now it's time to wipe it down.
get you a cloth or a paper towel. Look how nice that shined up. Really, really nice. Looking good. Nice and shiny there. Pretty satisfied with that. Good deal. Now we need to polish the base. and We also need to prep it to accept the new tires. So this channel is not big enough to accept this brass pipe, neither in the back nor in the front. So we're going to have to do a little filing or grinding with the Dremel to make the channel deep enough in order to accept this pipe that we're going to use to hold the new axles for the new tires. I got this pipe at Hobby Lobby. It's 3.30 seconds. I thought it was the right size. It turns out that this was a little bit too big. I should have gone the size one less. Now these old wheels and axles there we're not going to use. We're going to throw that in our keep box though in case we do need something. Well, let's go ahead and finish uh, buffing out the vase and get it ready for filing down the edges so we can accept that pipe to put the new tires on. Again, please make sure that you're wearing your safety glasses. Sometimes if you get your Dremel going too fast, like I said previously, it'll kick back on you and maybe send that base flying out of your hand or if you're getting a real nice shiny base or a body and you got this thing tuned up too high, you may just put a bunch of scratches in it. Now I recommend you use the brass wheel instead of the steel one because the brass one is a little bit more forgiving to your surfaces and it's liable to uh, not be as harsh or scratch as much when you're doing your work. Now just brush it down as best as you can. There, that's not too bad. We do need to polish it up though, so again, here we go with the Turtle Wax Polishing Compound. Here we got a different buffing wheel. And you're going to go ahead and start buffing around down. Look how quickly that gets black from that oxidation. These little buffing pads are very inexpensive. Like I said, I got these at Harbor Freight. It'll do the job for you though. But there's one thing also it will do. If you get too close to the edges of parts on your car that are sharp or sticking out, you'll see it's coming up here. Look how quickly it's falling apart. Yeah. Got a little bit too close in that one. But I am going to use it till it's done. And then just toss it away. Now we're just about finished here. Don't forget your edges and stuff. I mean, you're going to be handling this anyway. It's going to have to be wiped down again later, but. Uh, You get everything you can. That's about it. These areas here on the base are what I was talking about that would have to be filed out. So we're going to continue on with the filing or the grinding. Cut us off some small pieces of tube for the new axles. 
this is kind of boring so we'll uh, move on and we'll catch it the next step I've gone ahead and I've super glued some pipes onto the base we're going to use the wheels off one of these fast and furious Camaros for the wheel swap the wheels are excellent those real rider tires I've cut some channels in the tube to accept the super glue notice how the pipes fit into the channels a lot better since we've gone ahead and filed them down now some people will put glue on the end of the axles and then stick them in but in my experience if you do that you're liable to glue your wheel to your new axle holder or pipe whatever you want to call it and your wheels won't roll so again these little channels here I'll put glue in those and then I will insert the axles and straighten them out and then let them sit notice how I've also put screws in the bottom of the base to cover up the holes that uh, since we're not going to be using posts to be screwing into so I go ahead and I use the the gel super glue here uh, it's a little bit thicker and it doesn't run around as much you can get it at any any store practically go ahead and insert your axle make sure it's seated properly I should have gone ahead and glued the other one in the rear while I was doing this now we got glue in the channel we're gonna put the rear wheel in there set that in there make sure it's straight and level of course there you go take another look at it from a different angle that looks pretty good now we're gonna let that set up and dry and then repeat the process on the other side now let's talk about the engine swap I like the engine out of the Red Baron I especially like the front radiator with the Iron Cross it looks cool but I never really cared for the engine overall as far as all the the header pipes and everything coming out of it they're just a little bit too whimsical for me plus come on it's only a six cylinder so what I've done is I initially wanted to use the engine out of this diaper dragger but when I held it up to the body here the engine looked just really oversized and too cartoonish you know so I said no I, that's not gonna work either so I found this 1932 Ford and I cut the engine out of that already obviously and this is what I had here got the radiator and everything connected to it I've gone ahead and filed down the engine ahead of time because it was just sitting up too high now the scoop out of the top of the engine was also the post that held the engine into the 32 Ford so I've gone ahead and ground that down also so here I'm going to uh, take the body and put it on the body of the Red Baron and notice how it's kind of flopping around there a little bit it's just not laying flat so in order to get the engine to fit onto the Red Baron body, I'm going to have to grind down the engine block out of the Red Baron. And I'm also going to have to cut notches into the fenders in order to accept the headers. Well, again, this is kind of a boring side of this, so I'll show you the results here in just a second. All right, we're back. I've gone ahead, like I said, and I've filed the fenders on the Red Baron and I've also filed down the engine block itself now here's another one that I had and you can see the difference in the engine block there and as you can see also the fenders how much I've taken out there but as I show you here now the engine with the post filed down here and the body it fits nice and flat 
and this is ready to go. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and have to epoxy that engine inside the body to hold it in place. Now, I could come up with a screw system or something, but um, I think the epoxy is gonna be just fine. And we'll go from there. In order for me to paint this, since there's no post available now, I'm gonna use some screws to hold the body in place while I paint it. Get right back. All right, we're ready to paint. What I plan on doing here is I'm gonna paint the entire car ice blue. And once that's done, I'm gonna paint the back half of the car a regular blue or a dark blue and fade it to the front because that's the color of the Blue Max emblem is a blue, but I wanna get that really cool fade in there. So we're gonna go ahead and paint. Remember that your first coat is a light coat. Let's let that dry for a few minutes. A few minutes later. Now we're ready to paint the back half of the car blue. Make it a little bit darker in the back there. So let's go ahead and start that. Very, very subtle fade. Hopefully with a few more coats we can get that darkness that we're looking for here. I think that's starting to work. Yeah, that's coming out nice. nice nice fade from dark to light which is what I was looking for all right well, let's let that bad boy dry here we have all of our components ready to go the base with the wheels the body with the interior is installed and the engine is ready to go and the helmets ready let's put it all together and do our reveal this is what we started with an old red line red baron that definitely needed some help do your customs the only thing holding you back is your imagination have some fun with it and here's the result this beautiful 
Blue Max transformed, engine swap, wheel swap, paint job, and I also made my own decals, which I'll cover in another episode. Thank you for joining us today on Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul, and keep painting and have some fun. Have a great day. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.